We are here in uh, 2022, new shop tour. So everyone keeps telling us we just had a shop tour, but that was two years ago. Well, we moved out of about 13,000 square feet into a massive 55,000 square foot factory. We're gonna show you Baja kits, Brentel Industries, and Revelk, our CNC shop as well. So come on through and we'll show you the whole thing. So this is our showroom, or it will be our showroom. Right now, it's not much. We just got started. We did the flooring, we did the countertops. A lot of the office stuff is a work in progress. Now what's not a work in progress is the shop, where we're building trophy trucks like crazy, building Baja kits, sending hundreds of kits out a month. Here's where we'll have our team meetings. Uh, so, you know, before race, we'll have anywhere from 30 to 100 people uh, in this room and Jordan and I go over the pit plan, the strategy, what we're gonna be doing. It's made it really nice, just simple things like having a space and place to do something. Uh, we've never had that before. We were either standing in the shop literally and everyone's kind of sitting on a race truck or something while they're working on them, but having an actual conference room to do pit meetings and, and whatever else, trainings, we've done uses so much for so many things so far, so it's great. This was gonna be a showroom, right? This is gonna be, just wait till you see in here. It's gorgeous. It's exactly what we planned. Pristine floors, super clean. Here's the showroom. A little creepy. It's full of bodies, fiberglass bodies. So we've got about 3,000 square feet just to hold this was race not truck bodies. anticipated. We're supposed to have all the new trucks lined up, all the new sand cars, everything we've got for sale. But uh, as things happen, it got filled with bodies somewhere during the move, and this is where we're at for now. So. By the way, those TVs, those came with the building. They're uh, kind of our favorite feature of the building, and we haven't got rid of them. <laughs> we will not be, we're gonna play the movie Rad on them over <laughs> and over. Um, this, because we've got two of them. it works. We've got two of them. All right, so uh, we're in the hallway. These are the offices. This is Baja Kits. Again, all bare walls. You gotta bear with us. Uh, we got JT, one of our sales guys down here. Drew, one of our production managers, uh, a few other guys that do marketing and work out of here. Next up, another office. This is where my wife works, uh, Stephanie. With, uh, she does all the accounting, HR, so yeah, it's a family business. It's gotten a lot bigger. We got 44 of us in here now, um, but she used to do HR and accounting for 350 employees, so she knows her way around that kind of thing. Uh, it's my office. Um, Honestly, it's really big. I don't need an office this big, but uh, here we are. I thought this desk was huge. I actually designed these desks on a plane. We were going to see a customer, and I got my uh, computer, fired it up, hopped on SolidWorks, and designed a desk. The only reason I did it on a plane is because I knew Jonathan would bitch at me if he found out I had extra time to be designing fun things like desks and not working on race cars. So, as soon as I had it done, when did you design this? I said, on the plane while you were sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Fail on it, my part, huh? Our, our buddy made the, uh, the, the wood tops and uh, now we just gotta finish the office off with some cool stuff on the wall so it matches the badass desk. Really stoked on the desk. They are, they are badass piece and everyone compliments them, so. You liked them so much you got your own, right? Yeah, yeah. I liked them so much I got my own. Now, the difference is Jordan's is finished when apparently <laughs> We need to find a fabrication guy to work on the aluminum. Yeah, we need to um, hire, a, a, hire a few guys. I don't guys. know where we'd find a fabrication guy because, uh, you know, what do they say about the plumbing in your house never gets done if you're a plumber or something like that? And same thing here, right? So it's gonna have a bar, a couch, a high top seating, uh, all in due time. Again, offices are not our primary concern. The shop, on the other hand, that's where it's at. So we do engineering, design, CNC programming, 3D printing, uh, a lot of prototypes here. Um, a lot of arguments go happen in here, right? A lot of arguments. This yeah. is where they all happen, actually. They start here. I don't know if they end here. They end in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Over here, you can see a lot of our 3D printed parts. Um, we can touch on those in other videos, but part of the design process uh, before making a billet part, we 3D print it. That way we can test it in real life and just kind of test fit and see how things work. Move down to sales, marketing, and shop managers but you can't miss the restrooms. Why? Because we've always had like two restrooms and now we have like, we got restrooms, stalls, stalls, we've got stalls, urinals, stalls. It feels like a Costco. So in this everyone place. can take a leak at the same time. Ryan, don't show that. That's top secret. Sorry guys. O'Reilly's McMaster car. No one can know that we, we'll no. Blur it out. This is Ryan. Ryan's our shop manager. Uh, takes care of just about anything and everything. Only All one or two things a day. 
all the pieces that I drop <laughs> and I drop a lot of pieces. So it, it takes a big team and we're building our infrastructure over here, but it takes a lot to get out to the desert with people all day. Um, three days a week, we're in the desert training and testing with clients. Are we going to go into the half built lunchroom? Oof, I guess so. We're showing it all. Might as well. Magical. So we actually expanded this in the room that you saw that was filled with the truck, race truck bodies because this was a little too small, <clears throat> the only thing that was too small in the whole building. So we expanded it, put some walls up, and um, here we again, are. Work in progress. All right, here, here's the stuff that everyone really wants to see. So all the other stuff you had to sit through, unfortunately, to start the exciting part. And this is the Brenthal Industries Trophy Truck Factory, where we produce 18 brand new trophy trucks a year and maintain another 15 for clients and go to 35 races a year. So we go to all the series, Best in the Desert, Score, Legacy, Nora, we mix in quite a few. So most of the trucks that you see in here actually live here. Um, oftentimes when a customer purchases a trophy truck from us, they live here, we take care of everything. So uh, a lot of them, this is their home. So most of the trucks that you're gonna see that were on the left side here are owned by Jordan and myself, Brentel Industries, and most of the trucks on the right side are clients' trucks. So first one we can do a quick look at, this is our brand new all-wheel drive. Uh, we currently have about 2,700 miles on it, and we're undergoing testing. So we're doing development here. We've made 100 changes over the past nine months. Some of them are really small. You move a power steering line from one side to the other because it was getting hot. Uh, some of them are more monumental than that in their chassis differences. But either way, we are getting it figured out and solved. So before a client gets the first one, it's ready to hit the ground running. Trophy trucks traditionally have always been two wheel drive. All wheel drive is a fairly new thing. Um, so it's new technology, new development. You know, we have people from everywhere. They purchase a truck from us and then we maintain it, bring it to the races. A good example would be this truck here is actually from Australia. So he flies over from Australia, jumps in his truck, goes to the race, and jams home. So you can see every truck is at kind of a different stage of prep. Some of them are about ready to pull out and go to a race. Others are just finishing their prep because there are so many different series, uh, they're staged up with different uh, dates. So it kind of In the future, out. what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a prep video so you have a little bit better understanding of what we do to a prep because we're very unique in the industry. Our preps are completely standardized. There's a set price for what we do, and you're not getting something you don't expect after you see a prep Which bill. is extremely unique, yeah. very unique in this industry. We, we don't say it's just based on hours. It is a standard set price. We've got four different levels. Everything we say is gonna be taken care of. So this is all the prep department. So as you look down the aisles here, you are seeing all the trucks that are currently undergoing prep. Well, you're seeing the majority all. of them. A lot of them are out testing that, or oh, get, going to a race a, or a dyno. Excellent, excellent point. So any of the bays that you see missing a truck right now, for instance, this one, empty bay, empty bay, empty bay. They are out in the desert right now, typically Johnson Valley at our personal location that we have 20 acres. And that's our test facility. We go out there on a 20 mile loop with clients to either shake down the truck before a brand new race, uh, after a prep, or potentially just coaching and training. So. All of that is something we offer as a full package here at Brentville Industries. All right, so now we are moving on to the new truck builds. These are brand new trucks. So we keep everything in different departments. We've got your fabrication department, your new truck build department, and your prep department. We just And trade-in. And trade-in department, that's a good point. How could you forget? Yeah, so don't be afraid to make us an offer on uh, trade-in. So we you got three sea dues well, we could take those towards a brand new truck. That's not a problem. Taking boats, semi trucks, uh, planes. We've had a Cessna 310 yep. we got on trade. That was cool. We got some real estate before. So if you've got something that you don't want to unload and you've got so much garbage in your garage, it's that gotta be like, worth something that we're gonna want to take. I'd Keep rather that in have mind. a trophy truck than this plane. We can work with that. That's not a problem. Going back to the new truck department, new assembly. So what you see here, that's a brand new truck. This is our Gen 3 model. Actually, scratch that. We will have a whole new video on our Gen 3.5. This is our new truck that has about 20 different updates, giving you 15 more horsepower, a few hundred pounds lighter, and lower center of gravity. On to the rest of the uh, builds though. That truck just came back from sandblast. So every chassis gets 100% sandblasted. Something unique again about Brentel Industries, we built 135 vehicles, so 
we know where every tab goes. The truck gets sandblasted, painted, and then fully assembled. So we try and stage the trucks right now in assembly as how we're getting the same type of truck done. Right here, you're looking at an all-wheel drive. That's number three, all-wheel drive truck number three. This is all-wheel drive truck number two. If you noticed actually on the new parts bays, everything is set ahead of time for them. You look in the bay and you're gonna see all the parts are staged, ready to be installed. You've got your rotors, hubs, axles, everything is sitting here. All the sub assemblies being made ahead of time on a bench, it's kind of a process. Again, one of the things people ask us is how do you build so many trucks a year? It's efficiency and having processes. Don't give away all our secrets. Oops. So um, really, it's not rocket science, that's, that's the crazy part, but it's still challenging to do and it took us a long time to figure it out. So again, having sub assemblies like Jonathan just showed you on the bench, having stuff, you know, a specific guy dedicated to building things on a bench so you don't have somebody on the floor here putting a, a sub assembly together and then putting it on the truck, right? That just wastes time. And having all those little things together, then throw it on. As we come along, these are some luxury pre-runners. So these are pretty unique. You're gonna see this cab right here, and it's all cut out, going on top of a chassis we've got in the fab area that we're gonna show you in a moment. But this cab, everyone always says, oh, is that a Ford F-150? When they go to a luxury pre-runner, no, that's it. That's it. That is the only thing we use that comes from the manufacturer. Other than that, it even gets our fiberglass on the front, our fiberglass on the rear. We offer two versions. One is a standard cab that is identical where your shifter, where your steering wheel, where your hood lines, and where the bed sides are at. Everything is absolutely identical. Um, the other version we do offer is extended cab because too many people want extended cab, obviously, it just provides lots of options. From here, the new assembly, we're gonna go to the fab area. We're gonna show you where the trucks start. So uh, we're heading over to the chassis table, surface plate, fixture plate, uh, whatever you wanna say. A lot of people say jigs. Uh, we refer to these as fixtures. Uh, jig is something that we consider as made in a garage. These are fixtures which are designed in a computer uh, with a lot of thought and, and uh, time into them. So here's our surface plate. Surface plate are six feet across by 12 feet long. Uh, we have all the holes are drilled and tapped half inch on five inch centers. Just how we started doing it 17 years ago on the table uh, and we keep using the same layout. So the idea here, it's, uh, it's pretty simple. Again, uh, this is all designed in the computer. It's all laid out. So this is our base. This is a big part of how we bring it from the computer, from design to reality to ensure that it comes out exactly how you want. If you didn't have a baseline with a grid, like Jonathan was just talking about, drilled and tapped, putting the fixtures where they need to go, the pieces wouldn't end up, and in the end, a small part wouldn't bolt on uh, in assembly you know, after you weld it. So, Yeah, all these sump assemblies uh, are welded on the bench. So as you can see over here, we've got generally three or four bench welders at a time that are welding lower control arms, shock mounts, radiator trays, jack tool trays, uh, anything of those sorts. You'll see over here, we have a bunch of CNC parts, uh, very simple fabrication items like threaded bungs. Uh, we do these in our other area over here, our CNC area called Rebelk. Uh, in the future, you could probably get these online. We will be selling these. Uh, we're not quite set up yet, but we will be there. So keep looking back. And over here, just a quick glimpse. These are all aluminum panels uh, with stainless steel mesh that go on the trucks. Um, these are made, stay tuned. In-house as In-house well. uh, at Revelk on our laser cutter. Yep. We recently took everything in-house from machining, welding. We just really needed the control over it. It wasn't as much of a cost situation as it was we needed it when we needed it. Now let's go over to the chassis where we're uh, putting on the rotisserie. So once we have a chassis built and completely ready to go. It has maybe half of the welding completed, of course, under all the important joints, uh, things of that nature. They go on a rotisserie. We've showed you these in some of our last videos, but the object of a rotisserie is to help your TIG welders stay in position on their welds. We can make it easier by putting on, on this long 20 foot rotisserie. It w goes around and they can get every joint in position. If you take a look at some of these welds, this is how we were talking about. It looks like a robot did them. They're unbelievable. All right, still in the, still in the fab department here. More chassis. Uh, we're gonna work over to more chassis. So once a chassis gets completely welded all the way through, it comes onto some jack stands so we can tap it all out. Tap it for a radiator, steering, uh, everything we've got to do with the truck. As far as the tabbing goes when you go to put it on a truck, 
Uh, it's super important with the, the production we have going on here that everything is set the same on every truck. So again, when the guys go in assembly to bolt, to bolt it on, it's just gonna fit. Um, so if you see all these bins, guys, this kind of stuff makes us happy, right? Just organization, same, rep repetitive, and you know where everything is. Um, part of organization is everything having a home. Uh, what is this chassis right here, Jonathan? This is a, a newer project that's pretty exciting. Um, you were talking about it earlier. This is our new luxury pre-runner. Yeah, so as we so showed you the cab for that Ford over there, what that means, it is a fully enclosed cab. It'll have air conditioning, it'll have heating, the most comfortable state-of-the-art you can get. Uh, a truck like this goes for upwards of 600 to a million. Uh, depending on what kind of options and things you're getting on it. That now, might sound like a big range, but there are a lot of different options on your interiors, mm -hmm. uh, engine packages, and, and whatever else. People always ask, why is a luxury pre-runner cost more than a trophy truck? It is a trophy truck, 100%. It's a trophy truck. Add more work. Months more work, and months of more, more work and more time. So it's pretty simple there. We um, get a lot of people asking about these um, because, so if you're a racer, you use a luxury pre-runner as your pre-runner, right? To go practice the course before race day. It's comfortable, it still has the function of a trophy truck. But we get a lot of people asking, hey, is that uh, street legal? Hey, can I drive out on the street? People like buying these and using them for recreation too. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Um, so we build them for anyone, of course, that so you don't have to be a race car driver. Um, but yeah, give us a call, send us but an you email. you probably should be a race car driver. Yeah, you, sh yeah, you should. Some of our equipment here, uh, we use an awful lot of Bailey equipment. We use uh, Bailey mill, Bailey lathe. This stuff does not get used that often anymore. As soon as we went to CNC, we found how easy it is to even turn down a part uh, on a CNC mill or CNC lathe in that case. And it, so they're kind of older pieces of equipment now. Manual machines are becoming more obsolete as we do higher quantity. Um, and we get more precise with every single part and let the guys and the welders do their thing. And by the way, that is a badass lathe. A 1640 Victor is a really nice lathe. This table is currently set up uh, just to do rear ends. So we have two full-time people on doing nothing but rear ends. They take an insane amount of time, a lot of fixturing, a lot of moving, a lot of welding. Well, this kind of concludes uh, the fab area for the most part. Uh, we got a couple other quick things we can show you. As you'll see here, this is all the tubing that is pre-bent, pre-cut, ready to make bumpers. Uh, our bumper fixture isn't out right now, but we'll make 10 of these at a time. Obviously, guys wreck bumpers, so something we have in stock, ready to go, as well as the rear ends. Our, our rear ends are pretty exciting. We could do a full video on these if that's something you guys wanted to see. They are a lot of billet. We have been updating them more and more lately. If you take a look, look at those rear pivot pockets. Those are 100% billet. Even the pad is billet, which is pretty cool. Your bump, Our stop, bump stop pad. pad is now a solid piece right here. And it's got a logo in it, which is pretty cool. Of course, uh, rear housings are 100% TIG welded. In the past, we did a lot of MIG welding um, all over to time, efficiency, and absolutely MIG welding is strong, but TIG welding is the premium, and that's what we're here to build. We now have a place to stage the fuel drums, the tires, the uh, spare parts racks, everything we've got. And this is like bigger than our first shop was. Literally. Seeing now filled with fuel yeah. and tires. So this isn't even like getting ready for a race. This is just every day how much is here. We're getting ready for a race and it's a little closer. There's almost double the amount of fuel drums that you'll see right there uh, and the amount of tires. Keep in mind, like we said earlier, we have trucks going out every, a few days a week into the desert. So they still need tires and they still need fuel. So even if we're not at a race, we do a lot of testing and driving development, whatever else. So this station is pretty much full blast going all the time. Here's our yard. We're on four acres. As we mentioned, we have 55,000 square feet, uh, but we also have four acres. So the yard is used for all the trailers, all the chase trucks. I think we currently have 12 trailers eight chase trucks. Uh, takes a lot to get all these trucks out there. So people always ask, how many trucks do you bring to a race? On average, seven to 10. Yeah, seven to 10 seven is pretty 10. average. All right, we're gonna go to the uh, finish up Brenthel with the parts department, uh, where we house everything there and where we assemble all the sub assemblies. 
Uh, after that, we're gonna go to Revelk and Baja Kits. We'll walk you through the parts department real quickly, uh, but we try to keep everything here in stock. It's important to have things like plumbing lines. Someone has a power steering line that's gone out and we know which one it is, how long, it's already pre-assembled, made, can ship it to you in Australia, New York, Texas, or hopefully you house a truck here so we don't have to deal with that and we take care of it all for you. Sometimes uh, down even in Baja, someone will be pre-running yeah. pre and they put 500 miles on their truck and they'll go, like, oh, whoa, hey, I need a new power steering line. Uh, put a lot of miles on the truck. We literally can ship it to them. We can meet someone at the border. Um, it's a fairly common thing if that happens. Lots of parts that are done, pre-assembled, ready to go. These are all from our machine shop. As you can see, everything's obviously always part numbered, what it is, where it goes. Stuff that's kind of cool about this, this is all aircraft hardware. Next time you're in a Boeing jet or a plane, notice, same kind of hardware. So that's not inexpensive. That's not your regular grade eight. That's not your, what the people say, expensive grade nine aircraft hardware. That is on every suspension pivot point uh, that's mandatory on the truck. Lots of radiators. Transmission coolers, engine oil coolers, power steering coolers. We use Maxima fluids for everything. As you can see, we get all 55 gallon drums uh, and distribute it into the trucks. Some of our trailing arms that again, came out of our machine shop. Those are fresh actually. Those just got, this got finished recently. And now we're moving on to some other uh, parts we'll show you over there soon. All these are done in-house in our own machine shop. And those ones are now all half price because uh, they hit <laughs> each other and Oh wait, there's more. Those are made for vehicles that may not be ordered or don't even exist yet. And that's all the part of production is getting enough stuff in stock so we can be ahead of it. When a chassis gets here, it's ready to go together. Someone last minute wants a race truck, we can get it to them. Oh, and what's that? That would be a Danzio P600 big block. Uh, you are looking at a trophy truck engine. Everyone always asks what they come from. They are completely <laughs> custom. It's a custom block, it's a custom head, and they are built four trophy trucks for the endurance. So these engines will go from two to 3,000 miles before they need to rebuild. They get a right around 1,000 horsepower. And how about miles a gallon? 1.7. But more exciting, what does it cost? It's about a $75,000 engine. And a rebuild is not cheap either. So uh, be good to be nice your engine. engine. <laughs> All right, guys, you've seen the race shop. You've seen the fab shop, you've seen the prep side. Now we're gonna get into Baja Kits, which is another company that is also Jonathan and my company, um, but it's in the same building What's now. What's Baja Kits really do? Nice. What's the difference between Baja Kits and Brentel Industries? Brentel Industries builds race trucks, that's it. Baja Kits, on the other hand, is built for your daily driver, whether it's your Chevy 1500, your Tacoma, your Raptor, your Bronco, your Land Cruiser, whatever it might be. Everything at Baja Kits is done in-house except for a few items like powder coat and anodized, um, which are basically the paint of the kits. So you'll see here, this is some inventory of parts that are in process. These just got back from powder coat. Um, you see these are about to be assembled. I'll show you the assembly area in a second as well as where, we're, where we weld them. Uh, this is another area. These just arrived back from anodized and powder coat. As you can see, they're all staged. They just came off the truck. These are ready to come off the pallets, get staged, for assembly. So basically, a kit gets laser cut, okay? We design it, it gets laser cut on our plate laser. Then, comes over to our welding area, which you can see over here. Each piece will come as a, a plate. It gets stacked together, gets welded, all in stages. Then, it goes out to powder coat. Like I said, that's the only thing we don't do here. So we send that out, comes back, goes on the rack. Then it comes over here to assembly. So in the assembly area, Everything gets laid out. We have quality control. Uh, what is this? What are these? Uh, new, what are these new things here, Jordan? <laughs> these are tablets. It's, a, it, it's nice when one of us doesn't know something because that means we're advancing. We do things. Uh, we try to always improve. Uh, these are tablets. Basically, a design process. So this is the assembly process. It makes sure that all of our guys are doing the same thing, the same way. We follow all the QC standards as well. So these are a lot of the assembly items. These are all stainless steel. So these are heat-treated stainless steel parts. These are tapers that adapt basically most of our kits to stock spindles of your truck. So uh, a lot of those here, we'll show you in a sec where exactly we make those, but keeping these in stock in the bins is, is huge. This is a special request from a customer. I actually did the same blue on my Bronco. Uh, it's King Blue. So generally we do black or clear, but in the- As I recall, I had to talk you into doing colors. That's right. I think you're kind of pissed off about it, honestly. <laughs> That's why I said custom. It's a custom order. 
it doesn't make it easy for us, obviously, when we're doing a considerable amount of them, trying to keep it all the same, keep it concentric. Absolutely. But, uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, I was like, well, they're mine. I don't, I want them bitch in color. I want them different. So now I'm in a lot of trouble because more people are going to ask for these colors. Absolutely. And Jordan's going to scream at me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's pretty much the welding, powder coat area, staging, and assembly process. Um, over here, we do have a few bays. Uh, for bringing trucks in. We do a lot of marketing trucks here, um, development. A lot of development R&D goes on here. Most uh, of it's R&D, yep. and we, we do do installs with Baja kits as well, but the majority of it's really R&D, and when marketing. we do installs, we're learning more, or marketing vehicles. Yep. yep, absolutely. Like this Bronco, I'm sure you guys have seen. By the way, there is a video out there on the Baja kits page. You can go see this thing running around in the dirt and uh, having a bunch of fun, as well as a full build on it and you'll see it, it was built and developed right here. But I think that pretty much wraps up the Baja Kits area. Uh, we can head over to Revel, which is our CNC and laser shop, and uh, check it out. Uh, as Jordan said, this is our machining shop, and we do, we have two lathes, two mills, a 4K laser, fiber laser, and a brand new press brake that we literally got yesterday. Super new. Um, we're running two shifts right now, and if you want to apply for the second or third shift, Please do, we need more CNC operators. Looking at the machines here, these are the two lathes and those are two mills. Lathes typically make round parts, uh, parts that are made from bar, tubing, Could you or make round this? stock. Uh, that would be made on this lathe right here. With live tooling, of course, so yep. you could come in and do some of these other ops. So this is loaded up right now with Delrin, right? So all of the bushings from our trophy trucks and our Baja kits are made from this material right here. This is a two inch round Delrin piece. It is solid and it is extremely durable. It's, it's the best stuff you can have for a bushing. Uh, we make all of them right here and we do thousands at a time. So what's really cool is you can see what the chunk of material, what it starts at, it's huge. So you start with this huge 7075 aluminum piece. Very, very expensive. So you don't want to mess the part up, right, Matt? No, no. No, don't want to mess. <laughs> Only a little bit of pressure on that. And then uh, it comes through here. You can see these are, like you said, these are rough cuts. So as the ops go through, it'll get cleaner and cleaner. It'll make it smoother as it goes through all the processes. But it's pretty cool that uh, we didn't really plan this, but it's awesome that uh, it's in perfect stages. It's full solid and then, uh, and then yeah. there. So we got the... I think these are some Bronco upper control arms, which has been our huge, huge seller for Baja kits. Very popular. We've had to up our produ uh, production on all of them. Here's a the finished part. Um, you can see, obviously, these are smaller than the race parts because they're going on a Bronco. This is a stock width arm, pretty much done. So this is a completed part. And you can see in the machine there, uh, they're doing different ops in different stages. So every time we get a completed part off. Um, and there's kind of more sacking over here. This is the material that these start out with. So. A lot smaller than the uprights we just showed you, but that turns into that. Quick, just snapping back to the uprights. These are part of the uprights that Matt's working on. Um, it's just one of the very first stages. You can see it's a long process and those are very heavy. So just getting these up in the machine is its own, its own challenge. A lot of our uh, fixtures, you know, we're somewhat new to machining here, just under two years. So it's definitely taken us a while to get up and running, make more fixtures, make more vices, uh, vice jaws, say, but quite a bit of parts that go into it. And we're, we're working our way there. We're getting more and more efficient as we go. Hopefully in the next year or so, we'll be a well-oiled machine on the machining side of things. Uh, our fabrication assembly, all that is very dialed in. We've been doing that for so long. 17 that years, the efficiency, is there. Every, the efficiency is there. We, yep. We're working on it in this department. And if you'll notice, there is some more room here where we plan on filling it with more CNC's. We can show the laser first and then hop over to the press break. Or you want to show the new stuff first? I'll show the new stuff first. All right, all right. So how new is this? We got this yesterday. It just this landed. It's not 24 hours old and we don't know how to operate it yet, and it's not even <laughs> Obviously, it's still very, very new. So this is pretty exciting. Uh, we had an older press brake before. Uh, you can kind of see it it's stuffed away in the corner, waiting to get taken away. But this is our brand new Denner press brake. Uh, this is full CNC, it's got backstop, it's got everything you could possibly need. Uh, so this will be a lot more efficient. We can do a lot more parts in it. To give you an idea of kind of what this machine does, for those of you that aren't familiar with um, the sheet metal process, these are Ford Bronco lower control arms, okay? So these come straight off of our laser, which we're gonna show you in a second. We take a whole sheet, the laser cutter cuts it out. This plate is then 
going to go in here. A die is gonna come down, which by the way, we can do a whole video on this later, a specific video on the fab Absolutely. shop. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, but anyway, there's a, a die that goes in here, a top die and a bottom die, and they're gonna go right on this bend line and they're gonna bend this whole piece up. This is obviously steel, it's a very strong machine. Um, it bends it with precision based off of our CAD files that we directly drop into the machine, off of our design, and then all of these get bent up, which then go to Baja Kits or to the race shop, and then the welders can do their thing. But um, again, precise machine, and that bends all the plate. All right, we're coming up on our 4K laser. Um, had this probably about a year now. And again, another item that we're getting, need to get more efficient with. Yeah. We have a nitrogen system on it. Um, one thing that this does is let us cut with nitrogen. For the race side, because we're TIG welding parts, um, it leaves a very clean edge, so you don't have to go through and clean it all up and sand it, which used to take a ton of time. We had a whole, basically a full-time guy just to clean up edges. So we use that for our tube laser cutting and our plate. Um, quick, quick snapshot over here. This is our material area, which again is something that's just kind of crazy. Jonathan and I still think we have a whole area just for material. This used to be as big as our shop, like literally half of our shop we used to be this, this big and we'd build chassis out of there. So uh, we have two loading, uh, loading docks for semi trucks, which makes it nice when we're getting uh, big shipments in, super efficient. Really nice having the laser in-house where you need to mock up a part, make a example of something, do it quickly, and just knock it right out. Exactly, so this is the tube laser right here. Um, as you can see, this guy goes back and forth. There's a chuck right here that holds the tube, and it rotates it. Again, this, is, this reads a CAD file that we send it from our design straight here, so it comes out exactly the same. It cuts the profile of the tube. It also laser etches the part number on it, like Jonathan showed you earlier, so we can identify the tubes to our drawings, and then the guys can put those in the fixture to make a trophy truck. Huge, huge asset, and we've kept this busy, um, and it will get busier, so. I think that pretty much wraps up uh, Brentel Industries, Baja Kits, and Revel. Hopefully this answers a lot of your questions. Um, we have another YouTube video that's a little older, and the title is something about new shop. It's Fed not shop new. Tour. It is not. We'll change the thumbnail on it. We, we probably moved five times in <laughs> seven years, eight years, just with growth. But we're not moving again. We're done. We're staying here. We're gonna this make it big. work. This is plenty big. Um, you know what we didn't show? So we, in this building, we, we didn't even touch on it. We have another 3,000 square feet of warehouse space and another 5,000 of office up front that we still didn't touch. Um, so we have more room for growth here uh, as well. But hopefully this cleared up a lot of stuff. If you guys have other questions uh, about the shop, about things you'd like to see, please comment below. And that's stuff we are absolutely stoked to build on in the future. So this is our newest shop as of 2022, just to be clear, 2022 new shop.